Okay, so today we're gonna cast aluminum. The first step is to make some green sand. It's just sand, screened, made smaller, and kitty litter or bentonite. Also screened, removed all the big parts in it. The bentonite will transform in a clay that will bound all the green sand together giving you a pretty good cast. As fine as the green sand is, the fine the finish of the cast will be. If you cast something you will not machine, you will have to have a very fine green sand, almost like a powder. But for machining purposes, I, <laughs> I really cast one in pure rocky sand. It was okay, but I want to get a smoother finish this time, and here goes. Okay, so the next the next step, just to mix it. Some people like to stick their hands in it. I think I will do the same. You just mix it, mix it. After you mix it somewhere, you need to wet it. Not too much, not too less. If you wet it too much, you can put some more sand and then mix it again. Okay, so transferred everything in a bucket, and the result is quite pleasing. I think I got it too wet, because it kind of sticks on my hand, but then again my hand is wet too. I can break it into chunks. I think it's almost the right consistency. It's just a bit too wet, but... Not that of a great cast. Okay, so this is this. If you are asking already for the proportions, I just eyeballed them. So I don't know how much, how much water, how much sand, how much bentonite. But I'm pleased with this result, so I will stick to this. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Remember, it will be a simple cast. It will not be something complicated. I just want a damn cylinder of aluminum. So let's see how that works, huh?
last time it freezed down here. Now I can see it's good. It's okay. Well, so I'm ready. It's just tested. I don't know if you can see, but it's still hot. <laughs> you can see it's red hot. This is how it glows in the dark. Yeah. Anyways. As I said, it was just a simple pour. The furnace... You cannot feel that, but it's very hot. It's stupidly hot. of aluminum that's what there you can see this lag <laughs> yeah well Got just some surplus here. I really don't have in what to pour ingots right now. Still pretty hot. Outside of the molds, I, I can't touch the outside of the molds. Okay. This is. I can. You can imagine how hot this is, huh? Ah, this one melted. All the plastic. Don't melt my bucket, sucker. Don't want, I don't want to fuck up the lens. But, there you go. That's one. Well, I will. This is the second one. This one you saw me make the mold for. This is the bottom of it. Okay, so I brought in the furnace because it's that hot still, unlike half an hour later. And it's that hot. It's, this is after half an hour it had been shut down. <laughs> and. This is what I've casted today. Uh, now for a Q&A or questions and answers. When using... When you want to make a good mold and to have a good casting, you need a riser. Why do you need a riser? Because, you see, it's concave here. That's why you need the riser. Why do you need those frames? I've talked about in the first, in the introduction of the video. Well, because if you cast in something else, you'll probably melt it. Like I did with this one. And you can see the crappy bottom. Why compact the sand very well? You see how nice it's here? Check out has, how bad it's here. This is because I've compacted the sand very well up. 
after I put it in the mold and afterwards down it wasn't compacted enough I didn't hit it with anything, I didn't have a rod I just pressed it with the finger and at the bottom it's rough doesn't matter right now because I'll machine it and I've made these two pieces for no reason I've made it just to machine them and just learn to use the lathe again you can see here the concave part I think you can anyway that's it for this video keep watching look at my other videos uh, and that's all if you want you can subscribe more will follow thanks a lot